Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I'm going to discuss why you may or may not want to learn functional programming in JavaScript. If you've been paying attention to any of my videos lately, I've made many videos about functional programming concepts, and I'm teaching them in the JavaScript programming language. However, if you were to Google the best languages for learning functional programming, you will see that JavaScript does not appear in the top six, nor does it appear in the top on this particular list. And that's because JavaScript is not necessarily a great functional programming language. So why would I make so many videos about learning it? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. So, firstly, why might you want to learn functional programming? The immediate quick wins with functional programming are stability at runtime, since most of your potential errors will be caught at compile time, and you are much, uh, much more able to manage complexity. So as things get more complex in a functional programming application, the way that it manages state and uses immutable data structures allows the code to maintain a much more reasonable level of complexity, even as it expresses more complex concepts. Next up, why not learn functional programming? So if you are brand new to programming and you are currently working through another programming paradigm, for example, you are learning object-oriented programming, or you're maybe doing a bunch of stuff in Java, trying to learn the two at once will probably just confuse you more than anything. Stick with something that allows side effects because it will make the quick wins of feeling like you're getting something done much more rewarding and you will associate good things with learning programming versus banging your head against the wall, which is often the feeling that you get when you start learning functional programming, especially in a purely functional manner. So why not learn functional JavaScript? If you are primarily using JavaScript for basic DOM manipulation, or if you are already proficient in better functional programming languages, you probably won't be very impressed with the benefits that you get from functional programming in JavaScript. Because while JavaScript facilitates, because of its flexibility, many of the design patterns and basic fundamentals of functional programming, you are not given the immutable data structures uh, as part of the language. You are not given currying necessarily as part of the language. Various things that allow for the depth and the power that you get from a language like Haskell are not baked in. And so you probably just won't be very impressed with what JavaScript has to offer. Likewise, if you're primarily a front-end designer and you are just doing some DOM manipulation, there's not a lot of data management that you're probably doing, and so the management of complexity is likely not a big win for you, and it just won't be a good return on your time investment to learn functional programming concepts. So that may sound very doom and gloom, but why may you, may you want to learn functional JavaScript? So if, if you follow, fall into any of these categories, it may be of interest to you. If you are already proficient in JavaScript, if you don't know the basics of functional programming, if you want to improve as a programmer, or you want to explore functional programming languages in the future. If any of these apply to you, this video may end my functional JavaScript series may be of interest to you. So the benefits of learning functional JavaScript. If you are already proficient in JavaScript, you can already speak the language. It's not a new syntax. That means you can focus on the concepts without having to focus on learning a new language. If, for example, you try to learn functional programming for the first time by diving into Haskell, you will see all across the internet people saying that there's a very steep learning curve. And that's largely because it's a very terse language. And you are trying to learn this terse syntax while also learning very complex but very abstracted away concepts in that language. So learning in JavaScript, however, will allow you to stick with your familiar native language while learning these new functional principles that will build into functional patterns. Because as you take more time to reach into your functional programming toolbox, you'll find yourself building things in certain ways. 
you will end up naturally using function composition. You'll find your need, you'll find the need to understand currying. Those sorts of things will just naturally evolve out of the code that you build when you try to code functionally in JavaScript. So you will also get the immediate win of better management of complexity in your existing code. So even if you just use a bit of purely functional programming here and there in your program, you can use the side effects that JavaScript allows in a separate part of your program, and you still get the net win in this other module of using purely functional side effect free uh, code. So those are why you may want, those are some of the benefits. And then once you've learned these foundational uh, concepts for functional programming in JavaScript, you'll probably find yourself either thinking, this is something I really want to pursue, or this is something that really doesn't interest me. And the benefit of having these, this time that did not take you nearly as long, there wasn't as much pain and as much suffering as if you were trying to learn a new language at the same time just to find out whether or not this is for you. If you decide that it is for you at that point, you can then dive into a language like Haskell that will give you both the, the joys and the frustrations of purely functional programming. And you'd have to really start looking at the languages, the, the uh, yeah, I guess you could say all the languages, but largely Haskell is the one I'm referring to here, uh, to understand what I mean by the joy and the frustration, because it will be very frustrating, but you'll also get to write some really interesting code, and you'll learn a lot from coding in a purely functional language. Now, an example of once you've learned functional programming concepts in JavaScript, you will be able to look at some code like this, which both of these code snippets do the exact same thing, just in two different languages, and you won't have to learn uh, anything other than just the syntax. So you could immediately implement some stuff that works in Haskell, or whatever language you choose, because you already know the concept you're trying to convey, you just have to learn the syntax. So, in this code, we are creating an, ar a very, yeah, an array <laughs> called nums, storing it in the variable nums, it's 1 through 10, no number skipped, incremented by 1 all the way up. Uh, we're creating a function called getEven that takes an array, returns a new array that has all of the odd numbers filtered out. Then we are console logging the result of that by passing nums into getEven, and this will give us 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now the same thing in Haskell. You can create the 1 through 10 nums array like this. We're creating a function called getEven. It takes an array. And this here is essentially the map in Haskell. And this is the filter in Haskell. So you are this is the same, exact same uh, logic here. It's the modulus of the number that's taken out of the array applied with 2. And if the, the remainder is 0, it will be kept in the returned array which is being returned into x, because, and then we are not doing anything with x, we are just returning x as it was. But we could do something like x times 2, and then it would be all the even numbers multiplied by 2. What I'm trying to convey here is that if you already understand how this works, then you can immediately understand how this works just by looking, and you just have to focus on syntax. So if you plan on moving into functional languages in the future that are better suited for functional paradigms, and you already know JavaScript, you're not taking steps backwards, you're not wasting your time, you can really get comfortable with these concepts before you move into a different syntax. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of whether or not taking the time to learn functional JavaScript would be for you. If this was helpful at all, let me know. If this was a total waste of your time, I apologize, I tried to make it quick. Check out my video series on functional programming in JavaScript if you are interested. I'll continue to add to that as I come up with new ideas. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and I'll uh, talk to you later. Bye.